decreed it, we declared it, that we were going higher. Uh, we talked about the fact that we were in this time of fasting and praying and that uh, we were always at the place where we were asking questions in our lives. What shall we do? What steps shall we take? And what is the expected outcome? Remember, we talked about that, that you come to a place in your experience in life where you're always asking God, what shall I do and what steps shall I take and what can I expect as an outcome? And God says, I will give you the response and you get it when you pray, come on somebody, perceive and then pursue it. And so this morning, um, when we talk about going higher, it suggests that God's intention for us was a place of ruling for uh, we were supposed to be ruling his created universe. You remember uh, in the beginning he told Adam, I want you to be fruitful. I want you to multiply. I want you to replenish and subdue the earth. In other words, he says, I want you to have dominion. Somebody said, we're walking in dominion. Now, understand that ruling and reigning is done from a high place, all right? You are created to succeed. Will you minister that on your role? Say, neighbor, you're created to succeed. Turn, tell the other neighbor, I want everybody on your pew to understand, you are created to succeed. You are created to succeed at what God has created you to be. Now, you don't have to succeed at being who somebody else is. All you got to do is succeed at who God called you to be. I don't know about you, but I've discovered that can't nobody be me like me. And can't nobody be you like you. So while you getting you together, let me get me together. Because I recognize that I am created to succeed at what God has created me to be. Now, you are set for the high places. I want you to get that in your spirit. You are set for the high places. Now understand now that uh, you got you to gotta catch that in your spirit. That I am, say that, I am set for the high places. Uh, there's a pastor, Pastor M. Mickles, tells the story uh, that was told by a Danish, a Danish philosopher who gave a powerful lesson in a story concerning geese. The, the geese came and went with the seasons as uh, their uh, predecessors had done for centuries. And one day, some of the geese on their annual trip landed in a farmer's barnyard and the farmer adopted the geese and saw to it that they had plenty to eat life was easy and the geese decided that they had found a comfortable place to live out the rest of their days but as time went along the easy life took its toll on the geese the geese became fat and lazy and their desire to soar again in the high places had faded into a faint memory cascading in the winds of their minds. When they heard the familiar calls of their brothers and sisters and friends high above, the fat, lazy barnyard geese could only casually look up. And occasionally one of them would have an old stirring deep inside to join his friends and soar again where the air was pure, sweet, and bracing. And one day those stirrings was too strong for the goose to resist and it started its courageous run across the pasture and extended its wings and became airborne for only a few feet and then fell to the ground with a great thump. Before long, the call to the high places all but vanished in the barnyard geese. Their friends would fly over honking their calls to the higher, nobler life, but the grounded geese paid little attention as they were content as they laid and pecked away at the farmer's corn. 
And soon the desire to return to the sky and the long flights to freedom disappeared altogether. They were made for the high places, but complacency ruined their ability to reach the potential that they were ordained to reach. Can I tell somebody this morning that you are set for high places. You have been established for higher places, not high in self-importance, not high in self self-righteousness, not high in feeling like you are bigger or better than anybody else, but high places in your spiritual walk, higher places in your career, higher places in your family experience, higher places in everything God has ordained you to do. And so often, like the geese, we get complacent and stop moving toward higher dimensions. But will you tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, don't get stuck in complacency. You are set for the high places. Don't ever get too comfortable because God has ordained you for higher places. In our text this morning, Paul gives us a great prescription for moving higher. First of all, we got to understand that we've got to move higher in our relationship with God and that will prove productive and effective in all areas of our life. In other words, you got to recognize that when you go higher in your relationship with God, it's going to impact every other aspect of your experience. That's why the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and these other things will be added unto you. If you keep working and going higher in God, I guarantee you that your other relationships, your other experiences, and everything else concerning you is going to go to a new dimension in life we always consider that that I come to the place where I've got to analyze what have I done and what do I have left to do and what have I not done three things that you ponder all the time what have I done as I stand from this place what are the things that I have done what are the things that I've not done and what's left for me to do we always think about those things as children of God, as people of God, and we apply those to every capacity of our life. What have I done for God? What have I not done and what's left for me to do? In the text this morning, Paul is trying to convey to this church the necessity of pressing forward in faith not allowing insignificant petty things to get in the way of spiritual progress. And isn't that funny? Uh, I've noticed that uh, church folk are notorious for allowing petty things to, to get in the way of spiritual progress. Things can be moving well, and I guarantee you, you watch some spirit rise up in somebody to disrupt the spiritual progress. It will spring out of some ministry. It'll spring out of some auxiliary. It, it'll spring out of some board somewhere, somehow. Uh, it, it, but you got to understand, it is not the person. It is not the individual. It's the enemy spirit that understands the potential destruction of his agenda when people function as a living vibrant organism and do you not know that the very same thing happens in your personal walk you take notice you you can go through a period where you're running well with God God is blessing you and you are closer to him you are stronger with him you're walking under the anointing God is favoring you God is blessing you and things are going well and then all of a sudden the enemy will send a thought into your mind that you don't cast down that you don't take into captivity and before you know it uh, you were where you once were flowing and progressing now you experience a setback anybody ever been there 
Well, I tell you what, let me testify. Since you guys, y'all got it all together, can I testify that there have been times in my life where I've been walking with God and talking with God and God's been blessing and causing me to go to elevation and then God somehow, an enemy comes in with a thought, an enemy comes in with a suggestion and if you aren't careful to do what the Bible says, to take that thought in the captivity and bring it into the obedience of Christ, you will find yourself walking Walking off track. I know I got somebody that'll give an amen right there. Tell your neighbor, you might as well go ahead and acknowledge that you got off course somewhere. You were walking well and the enemy comes along because that's his agenda. He has come but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And so Paul knew, Paul knew in this Philippian church the potential that if he did not send a word, a sure word, uh, the move of God would greatly be impaired. And so Paul writes to this church. This is one of Paul's favorite churches. And, and he talks in the whole uh, text of Philippians. He talks about how they've been obedient and how uh, they need to continue to be united through their humility. And he gave the great example of Christ, how he humbled himself and how God exalted him. And he continues in the message because he understood that they were allowing some petty differences to arise. And they were starting to get off course and, and they've started to get distracted and God is trying to take them higher so he has to send them a, a quick memo to try to keep them on course and we look at chapter number 3 and verse number 12 now Paul says to them he says now I want you to understand it is not that I have already attained or am already perfected but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Now, we are on a lifetime journey toward perfection. All right? There is none perfect. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you either. No, no. Now, come on, come on, come on. Stay with me. There's nobody perfect. Huh? You are born again, those of you who are born again, you are born again, you have been made righteous, but you are in a process of being perfected in your practical daily life in God. I don't have anybody, although none is perfect, it's still no excuse for living and doing anything you want to do. I know I'm not perfect, I know I got issues, but that's not an excuse. Tell your neighbor that's not an excuse. We have to decide what we want as believers. Do we want a mediocre relationship where we are satisfied with living a life where sin has victory over us and we keep getting beat up by the same old stuff? We keep falling and succumbing to the same old traps uh, uh, in the backdrop of what appears to be fun and entertaining and, and, and fulfilling as the world sees it. All right? It's a decision. It's a personal choice. Uh, you, you, or you can live the lifestyle of a Christian or live the lifestyle of the world. Now, you got to understand, nobody's going to force you either way. It's your choice. It's your decision. And you got to make up your mind when you want to go higher that God's calling you to a higher place. All right. Now, although, although we seem to feel there is no difference, there is, and God takes note of which you choose, whether you're going to live a life of getting beat up by the same old sins and the same old things that keep drawing you in, keep defeating you, keep you in guilt and condemnation, or if you're going to live in victory and keep ascending to the higher places. The ultimate reality is that after it's all said and done, on this side, we will have to give an account for 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, somewhere around the 10th verse says that every man and is going to have to go before the judgment bar and give an account of what he has done in his body, whether it's good or bad. Now, now Paul says, Paul says, it is not that I have already attained or am already perfected. Now, if there's anybody that we would have thought was per perfect, it would have been Paul. Isn't that right? After all, he wrote most of the New Testament. 
All right. After we look at his life, his account, Paul, uh, the one who wrote even when he was in prison, the one who had taken uh, beatings, the one who had spoken the word and uh, had brought Gentiles into the faith. It, my God, when you look at Paul, everything in the New Testament talk about Paul, 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 Paul. And Paul says, I am not yet perfected. My God. Now, now he says, he says, he says, as a matter of fact, when you start thinking about people that all of it seem like they've got it all together, Paul would even begin to testify. Go, a little, go back a little further in uh, chapter 3 of Philippians, somewhere around verse uh, number 4. Paul says it this way. He says, though I also might have confidence in the flesh, if anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so. I was circumcised the eighth day. That means he was a good Jewish boy. They circumcised their boys on the eighth day. He said, I was of the stock of Israel. He said, I was of the tribe of Benjamin, top tribe. He said, I was Hebrew of Hebrews. And concerning the law, he said, I was a Pharisee. Concerning zeal, he said, persecuting the church. Concerning the righteousness, which is the law, I was blameless. He says, out of all those things that, that if anybody thought they had it together in terms of the flesh, nobody could top me. But then he, he declared and decreed that, and that, that those things mean nothing because when you decree higher uh, in your life, the declaration needs to come to manifestation or else it's just an excited shout out. Paul said, this is how I take my experience to a new and higher level. Notice what he says. Go back down uh, to, to verse number uh, 13. He said, brother, I don't count myself to have apprehended. But one thing I do, and this is what we've got to do, forget those things which are behind. Tell your neighbor, you've got to forget what's behind you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Zion is calling you to a higher place in God. All right? Zion is calling you to a higher place in praise. You want to go higher in your experience in life. You want to go higher in what God has assigned you to do. You want to fulfill everything God has ordained concerning you. Paul says that the way that we achieve it is that we've got to forget those things which are behind us. Now, what is behind you? There are two categories of what is behind you. All right, first of all, you got the obvious. Everybody knows all the things you've blown, all the things you've messed up, all the places you've sinned, all the things you've wrecked. Everybody knows all the junk that is behind you. Do I have anybody? Hey, wait a minute, now, am I talking in the right place? Anybody got some junk behind you? Come on, anybody got a trail? My God, you look at the trail of stuff behind you. You got all kind of baggage. You got all kind of weights. You got all kind of stuff. You all kind of God. You got stuff stuffed in bags and you got things stuffed in trunks and all kind of we, we all know that we got some craziness behind us we got some bad habits behind us we got some hang-ups behind us come on somebody and, and we got all these situations he said he said you got all of that that's obvious and see he says you got to forget it and we are all are always desiring to forget the things that are behind us those bad things anybody you want to forget that stuff you want to forget those bad relationships you want to forget those bad experiences. You want to forget, my God, everything that brought you pain and hurt. You want to forget those things which are behind. He says, now that's one thing that's behind you, but there's another category behind you, and that is the category of accomplishments and the things you've done well. Huh? All right? So, so there, there are two categories. You got the, the junk, the places I messed up, the things I'm ashamed of, the things that I wouldn't want anybody to know about. And then you've got also behind you all those wonderful things, the accomplishments and the achievements and, and the things that you've been successful in, the things that have brought you notoriety, the things that you can declare uh, well done in, the things that you are proud of. You got all of those categories behind you. And Paul said the truth is that you've got to forget both categories because both categories can be an enemy to your acceleration to higher and to your progress in God. I don't have anybody. He said, so you got to forget the things that are behind you. 
All right? Now, what did Paul do with his? Out of all those things, he said, I was the Hebrew of Hebrews, and, and I was circumcised on the eighth day, and I, I was a Pharisee, and I was zealous, and, and I was righteous in the law. I was blameless. But notice in verse uh, number seven, Paul says, uh, but what things were gained to me, these I counted loss for Christ. He said, yet I indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. In other words, you got to understand that there are some things and some accomplishments and, and some bad things that, that are behind you that you got to not allow to distract you because they will uh, hinder you from going higher. Paul knew that he had to keep his sights on continuation. He had to continue uh, watching and being progressive and he could not even allow the good things he's done. He could not even allow the accomplishments to distract him because the truth is your good days can be a hindrance to your future days. I don't have anybody in here. Huh? Some of us, and I got to tell us, some of us have gotten uh, goose fat on our past accomplishments. You might as well say you. Some, some of us have gotten goose fat. Y'all haven't forgot the story now of, of those geese that landed in the barnyard and start eating on the corn and forgot about that they are supposed to be sailing and soaring higher. God has blessed you and you have gotten stuck. Huh? Yeah, yeah, God, God has blessed you and you've gotten stuck. God elevated you. God progressed you. God promoted you. And then you messed around and got stuck. Come on, somebody. You used to have a powerful prayer life. You used to have a powerful song ministry. You used to keep a prophetic word in your mouth. You used to preach and evangelize. You used to walk uprightly, but you made it to a certain level. And now you're riding the coattail of yesterday's accomplishment and yesterday's anointing. I wish I could get somebody who can understand we cannot depend on yesterday's anointing. We cannot depend on yesterday's blessing. We cannot depend on what we achieved yesterday. Yesterday's gone. We can't allow it to get us stuck. Uh, one of my ministers sent this to me uh, uh, from her devotional and, and it was right on time with the message I was working on. It said, labor to maintain a sense of thine entire dependence upon the Lord's goodwill and pleasure for the continuance of your richest enjoyments. Never try to live on old manna, nor seek to find help in Egypt. All must come from God or thou art undone forever. Old anointings will not suffice to impart unction to thy spirit. Thine head must have fresh oil poured upon it from the golden horn of the sanctuary or it will cease from its glory. You got to understand today thou mayest be upon the summit of the mount of God, but he who has put thee there must keep thee there or thou will sink far more speedily than thou dreameth. In other words, all that goes to say is that yes, whatever you were blessed to be able to do yesterday is yesterday, but you got to wake up for new grace today. You got to say, God, I need a new shaking today. I need a new feeling today. I need a new anointing today. And sometimes we get so comfortable and we get so set uh, that we forget about that. I got to continue uh, progressing and pressing and, and forgetting those things which are behind me. That's why Paul said, forget. If we don't, we will stand gazing and the enemy knows what you did yesterday, but he's looking at you right Right now, and I would to God, I said it this morning at the earlier service, that God is looking for people who will continue pursuing and who will continue going higher even after he blesses them in their life. I can't get anybody. Why is it 
said that we only press hard after God when we've gone through a storm, when we lost a job, when some tragedy happened in our life. We get close to God, and we, all we want to know is more of God, and then God promotes us, elevates us, he moves us out of that situation, and we get to a place that we forget about how we are in relationship with God. God's looking for some people who can love him while your money is in your bank. God is looking for some people who will love you while your bills are paid. God is looking for some people who will worship him while things are going well in your body. God is looking for some people who will praise him with a healed body. Why is it he got to wait until we up under a rock somewhere? Why is it that he has to wait until we go through uh, some turmoil before we will look up and praise his name? God said, I have been more faithful to you than that, and you got to forget about the fact that I blessed you yesterday, and I, I, I took you to a new dimension yesterday. You got to forget yesterday's accomplishments in order for you to go higher today. Do I have anybody in here? Paul would declare that the longer I have been with God, the more I see me for me. When we first got saved and started doing good for God, you can almost forget that you are not there yet. Now, let me tell you something. Contrary to some of our theology today, and we got a whole lot of people that will have you thinking that some of us have made it. That we are perfect. Oh, come on now. We got some toddly little saints around that will make you believe. Huh? We got some folk that will make you believe now. They don't have any issue. Nothing bothers them. They like... Superman, that nothing phases them, all right? That there's nothing short in them. But all believers, and, 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 and you have to acknowledge that some have learned to walk in more of the victory that is ours than others through a daily discipline and a close relationship with God. But the truth is, nobody has escaped the grip of the flesh that is still very much a part of our existence. And so I, I know what there are some who are teaching and I'm not even trying to dispute and go there. I know that there are those who would have you to believe that I have made it to a certain level. I have attained certain things. But Paul says, as much if, as I'm connected with Christ, I've been writing the gospel, the word for him, the letters for him. I've been preaching in dungeons. I've been preaching in prison. I've been trying to encourage Gentiles. He says not that I have already attained or am already perfected. He said, I want you to understand understand that I have not reached that place yet. Paul said, I don't just say I have not yet apprehended, but he says, I forget. Get the things which are behind, good and bad. You see, let me tell you something. The last game is over. The last round is over. You got to get it out of your head. The last victory is over. It would be foolish for a coach to lead his team to win the first round in a tournament and then let his team have the next day off or the next two days off. No, what he will do, he says, I'll meet you in the morning. We will be at practice first thing in the morning because he knows that if they start partying and having a good time celebrating their victory and that they will not be ready to go to the next dimension. And I want to tell you that there are some championships that are still out there. There are some promises with your name on it. There are some things God still has that you can achieve there's some places God still wants you to go and he says you got to forget the things that are behind you both good and bad in order that you can achieve and go anybody want to go higher slap your neighbor high five and say neighbor you got to forget the things which are behind you and then Paul says Paul says um, and, and so uh, I in verse number 14, he says, so I press. Mm. Somebody say press. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward or the higher calling of God in Christ Jesus. Press, it, it simply suggests pursue. Somebody say pursue. When you pursue, you go after. 
You run hard after it. Come on, somebody. When you're in pursuit of something, you are moving, and you will discover it's an action word. You, you are in the process of attaining, and you're in the process of achieving. Pursue is from a Greek word, uh, D-I-O-T-U, which is an athletic term. Something cannot be done lazily. It cannot be done just casually, but it's moving. And, 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 and it means that your eye is set on the goal. When that track runner is running down, the only thing that he sees is the goal. When that athlete is running down the football field, the only thing he sees is the end zone. When that basketball player uh, is running down the court, he sees the hoop. It's because it, he, it comes from that word pursue. Ask your neighbor, are you in pursuit of anything? What are you pursuing today? What place are you trying to get? What's the next dimension in you? Hebrews, the 12th chapter, tells us that, listen, we got to lay aside every weight and sin that so easily besets us so that we can run the race with patience, so that we can endure, so that we can receive the prize. Anybody want the prize this morning? Oh, come on, somebody. It's been eluding you. I'm telling you, God is not finished with you yet. I know you've had some good things happen in your life. I know you've had some wonderful things happen in your career but let me tell you something God has created you for higher and he wants you to rule he wants you to reign he wants you to have dominion and I'm telling you there's some things that God wants to bring under your domain that have not gotten there yet but baby you ought to say the door is open and I'm ready for higher somebody shout higher, higher. say as a matter of fact the only place for me to go is up I don't believe y'all believe that this morning. I, I don't believe you believe. Do you receive that? I told you that there are some things that God uh, wants. There are some things out there that he wants you to experience. And, and, and there are various stages in pursuing now. But one stage you will not find in pursuing is sitting around goose fat. That, that, that's not a stage of pursuing. Huh? That, no, 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 no. That, that's not one of the stages. You might, you might be in the process. You're running. You're making transitions, transactions. You're doing some things, but you are in pursuit. If you're, it might, you might be in pursuit of your degree. You might have to take one class at a time, but in your pursuit, you're moving. Come on, somebody. You might be on your way to advancement on the job, and you are making advancement after advancement, whatever it is you need to do, whatever class you need to take, or whatever discipline you need to do. If you're trying to grow higher in God, you understand, I'm not just sitting around twiddling my thumbs, but I'm praying, I'm fasting, I'm believing, I'm reading the word, I'm putting my faith into action because I'm in pursuit. Ask your neighbor, say, neighbor, are you in pursuit of anything? Are you chasing after something? Are you going for anything? What has God shown you? What has God promised you? What has God told you concerning your business? What has God told you concerning your career? What has God told you concerning your family? What has God told you concerning your finances? What has God told you concerning in the next dimension in him your spirituality your call your walk with God you got to understand I'm in pursuit I don't have time to be looking back I don't have time to be gazing in the, uh, the rear view mirror because I've got to look straight ahead I'm moving somebody say forward I'm moving forward Paul said I got to press I got to press he said press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus God has called us and God has established us for what he has created us to be. Now Paul says the high calling, and that's the life that is hidden in Christ. Set your affections on things above where Christ is seated, not on things below. And some of our minds are set on lowly things. Huh? So, sometimes you got to understand that, uh, that uh, we got to set our mind on our purpose for living and being higher and getting back to the original place of what God says we are to be. To be fruitful and to multiply, to replenish the earth and to subdue it and to have dominion. Living a life that is spiritual and not given to flesh. It's easy to give in to the flesh. It's easy to do what the world is doing. It's easy to act like all the rest of the people who are foolish in the world. It's easy. Anybody can do that. 
Huh? It doesn't take much to do that. That's what we were born. We were born in sin and shaping into iniquity. Uh, anybody can do whatever uh, our flesh says do. But listen, it takes somebody who's pursuing to begin to, to renounce and, and to discipline the flesh because I know I've got a goal and I know I'm trying to achieve something. I, I'm not going to be goose fat and just get here and get complacent and get content. And look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you're not goose fat, are you? You don't get goose fat. You've been sitting around God's show showing you something and my God it's time to stop complaining about it's time to stop talking about it's time to stop uh, uh, just sitting around and, and criticizing and started moving toward what God says you can be the goal what you pursue can I tell you this that what you pursue you will obtain I said you will obtain what you pursue now whether it's good or bad, when you pursue it, you're going to get it. You're going to get it. Oh, yeah, you're going to get it. Positive or negative, good or bad, spiritual or carnal, because you have the capacity to go to it. God put that in you because of your being born again. God promised that if you delight yourself in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. I wish I could get some people who would learn how to delight in God to get what you want. He said, if you delight in me, I'll give you the desires of your heart. And when your desires line up with God and you begin to love God like never before, God says, I'm going to make some things happen. I will cause some rivers to flow. I will cause some doors to open. I will cause people to favor you. As a matter of fact, he says he will arouse himself for the set time the favor you has come. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's your set time. The Lord would do it. And so Paul knew that the Philippian church was a great church. Yet he warned them that if they got goose fat, and allow the enemy to cause them to become complacent and stop pursuing higher calling that the enemy would succeed in deflating the momentum of the flow of the spirit. He knew that there was great danger of doing what they did in the book of Amos. Can I take you there just for a second? Amos chapter number 6 says in verse number 1, Woe! Tell your neighbor, say woe. Woe to you! who are at ease in Zion huh? and trust in Mount Samaria, notable persons in the chief nation to whom the house of Israel comes. And, and, then, and then go down to, um, let's see, verse number, look at verse number three. It says, woe to you who put far off the day of doom who cause the seed of violence to come near, who lie on beds of ivory, stretch out on your couches, eat lambs from the flock and calves from the midst of the stall, who sing idly to the sound of string instruments and invent for yourselves musical instruments like David, who drink wine from bowls and anoint yourselves with the best ointments but are not grieved for the affliction of Joseph. He said, woe to them! who are at ease in Zion. You know who Zion is. He's talking about us, the people of God. Woe to us who have gotten big. Come on now, you're so wonderful now. You're so blessed, you're fabulous. You can eat in nice restaurants. You can dine in wonderful places. You go in and out of facilities. You have opportunity to experience the fine things of God. You walk in the blessings of God. God has favored you on your job. God, and you have gotten at ease. He said, whoa to them who are at ease in Zion, who have become complacent, who have forgot about chasing after God, who have forgotten about their devotion to God, who have forgotten about their commitment to God. He said, woe to them who are at ease in Zion. Ask your neighbor, say, neighbor, are you at ease? Yes, God is looking for a people who will seek him in good times. All right? And not just wait until bad times come. I, I don't want my children to love on me just when they want something. Come on, somebody. It, you, aren't you like that? L listen, I, because I want to do good by you. I want to bless you. And that's the same thing God says. He said, I want, I'm here to bless you. I've got 10,000 blessings in my hand to satisfy the poor, and I want to pour it out to you. Uh, don't, don't, don't wait till I have to get you down on your back, but bless me while you feel good. Bless me while things are going well. Love on me now. Don't wait until the bad, dry season, but why don't you praise him right now? As a matter of fact, somebody ought to give him praise right now. Now. 
And so we go back over, and, and, and I'm, I'm just about finished. Paul says, he says that, listen, I want you to understand that I have not already attained or am I already perfected. He said, but I'm pressing. I'm pressing on. He says that I may lay hold of that which Christ Jesus has laid also hold of me. And he says, I don't count myself to have apprehended. I don't want you to think that. But one thing I do is forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And then he goes on and says, therefore let us as many as are mature have this mind. And if anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. He says, nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us be of the same mind. Now understand what Paul says as he wraps it up. He says, I want you to understand that we need to operate at the level you have already reached. He said, the level that you've already attained, that's what verse 16 said, to the degree that you have already attained, walk in that. It suggests that we can move to some higher levels in knowledge and experience and spirituality and yet not walk in the practice of it. Because some things we have been exposed to and some things we've been taught. Come on, somebody. Some things we've been delivered from. Some things we know better. You might not be perfect, but there's some things you've already been taught. There's some things you've already been shown in Scripture. Come on, somebody. There's some levels you've already reached. He says, walk in it. No, you might say, well, I got still some issues. I got still some flesh issues. And that as soon as I take authority over one thing, the enemy tried to show up in another area. He said, it's going to happen. But the level you've already attained, the exposure you already have, he said, walk in it. All right? Progress. We impede our own progress in the upward calling when we get at ease in Zion. But as we sang a few minutes ago, today Zion is calling you to a higher place of praise. To stand upon the mountain and to magnify his name. To tell all the people of every nation that he reigns. Zion is calling you to a higher place of praise. So Paul says, you are a mighty people with a great heritage and destiny, don't allow any enemy strategy to cause you to miss going higher in God and every purpose in your life. I know that I have not yet attained. There, are, there is always more, always higher, and always deeper. But how many of you know God is calling you today to go higher? Anybody want to go higher in him today? It's time to release that goose fat mentality and declare that uh, I'm going higher. It's time to go back and re-envision soaring high in the things of God. It's time to get uh, stop being so complacent and start moving forward in what God has assigned you to be. You won't know what tomorrow brings in a world where few hearts survive. All I know is the way I feel, and if it's real, I'm going to keep it alive because the road is long. And there are mountains in our way, but yet we'll climb still higher every day. Somebody can declare, Lord, lift us up where we belong, where the eagles fly on the mountain high. Lord, lift us up where we belong, up from the world we know, where the clear winds blow. Some hang on to what used to be. Stop living your life looking behind, because all we have is you right now all our lives are in you tonight but the road is still so very long yes there are mountains in our way but we won't worry because we're achieving we'll keep climbing still higher every day somebody said see time is going by and sometimes yes we will cry but he'll wipe every tear from your eyes is there anybody here who's declaring lord lift me up to where i belong I want to fly like an eagle 
because I'm tired of being goose fat. Come on, somebody. I'm tired of missing what God has for me. I'm tired of being complacent in the same old, same old, but I'm ready to go a little bit higher. I'm ready to go to another dimension. I'm ready for God to take me to the place he has ordained. I thank God that he delivered me from some stuff. I thank God that there's some garbage in my uh, yesterday. I thank God that he's allowed me to accomplish some things. And there's some things that I did that were good yesterday. But I'm like Paul. I got to forget those things which are behind me. And I got to keep on pressing because there's still mountains to take. There's still authority to walk in. There's still some victories that belong to me. There's some new anointings that are mine. There's some new destiny that belongs to me. And I'm so glad today that he won't count it against me, that I have not yet been perfected, but he'll keep on charging me, and he'll keep on energizing me. I got to get my geese mindset back. I ain't perfect yet, but I'm pressing a little higher. When God calls me up, and I want you to declare that there's no place for me to go but up when God says come on to another level the only place for you to go is up high five your neighbor this morning and tell your neighbor I don't know about you but I'm going higher I'm going higher higher in the things of God higher in anointing higher in victory higher uh, in everything God has charged me to be uh, I'm tired of missing uh, I'm tired of missing it uh, and I want to go higher I'm so glad uh, that I can say with the songwriter uh, I'm pressing on uh, the upward way uh, new heights I'm gaining uh, every day uh, still praying as uh, I'm onward bound uh, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Somebody say, I'm going to a higher place. I'm getting back. I'm getting my vision back. I'm getting my enthusiasm back. I'm getting my determination back. Everything that the enemy stole, God said, I'm going to restore it back to you. Everything, the years that were stolen, all the years uh, that the palmer worm stole, uh, all the years uh, that the canker worm stole, uh, all the years uh, that the swarming locust stole, he said, I'm restoring it back to you. Uh, he said, I'm going to cause you uh, to have the red latter rain uh, and the former rain uh, in the same season. Uh, in other words, uh, I'm going to cause you uh, to eat uh, and be satisfied and when you eat uh, and you're satisfied he said then you'll praise my name is there anybody in here who wants to get your joy back is there anybody in here who wants to get your motivation back the devil stole your joy the devil caused you to get down you went through a trial you went through a test you went through a storm and you got complacent but the devil is a liar I feel my joy coming I feel my stirring coming I let that situation hold me down I let that individual hold me down I let that job hold me down I let that condition hold me down but no longer no longer I got my joy I'm going higher say yes say yes if you're going higher I'm getting my geese mindset back I've been walking around the barnyard too long I've been clucking around too long I'm ready to go to a higher place God lift me on up I don't know about you but I'm decreeing up up and away I'm going to the next dimension my business is going higher my career is going higher my family is going stronger my anointing is growing stronger say yeah say yes say yes hallelujah hallelujah Lord lift me up 
where we belong. God said, I have called you to the high place. You have allowed your, the baggage of your past. You have allowed the accomplishments of your yesterday to cause you to become complacent. And Paul says, no, no, no. I'm not perfect. But I know one thing. That for me to get higher, I got to forget those things that are behind me. Uh, good or bad. See, you can't rock on yesterday's account. Yeah, you did a good thing yesterday, but you got to get up today and say there's still some territory. There's still some things for me to achieve. There's still some places for me to ascend in your relationship, in your finances. You, 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 you're not perfect. You haven't achieved everything, but, but he said, I want to take you. Because in the beginning, I created you. I set you in a place of ruling and reigning. And you can't rule and reign from the valley. You got you to you gotta rise. Somebody say, the, the wind beneath my wings. I, I feel it. I feel a rumbling. The wind beneath my wings. I, I feel it. I, I, can, I can feel myself catching the air. I, 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 that discouragement that kept me down. That, that, those, that, that guilt that tried to make me feel like that God wasn't going to bless me anymore, tried to keep me down. My mistakes of yesterday, my sins, my shortcomings. But God said, just like Paul said, no, no, no. I want you to understand as much as I love God and as much as I've done for the kingdom, I am not yet perfected. But this one thing I do, I can't stay and wallow in yesterday. I can't let yesterday's condemnation keep me from today's victory. And I can't look in the rearview mirror of yesterday if I'm trying to get into my tomorrow. And I'm here to tell you that God has some great tomorrows for his people. I don't care what it looks like economically. I don't care what's going on in the world around you. God has ordained you for a set place. And it's not a lowly place. And he doesn't want you to think more highly of yourself than you ought. But to think soberly. And he says, I know who I've called you to be. I know I blew greatness in you. How do you know? Because it was his breath that he blew in our body. And how many of you know God is a great God? So tell your neighbor then there's greatness in you. God created you in his image. So there's greatness on you. You are in the image of the greatest creator of the universe. And so don't let anything, good or bad, keep you. And I decree today that that, that whoever you are this morning, you've been allowing, you've been trying to fight through to get to the next dimension. I want to pray for you right now. I want to pray for you. If, you. if you've been allowing some things that, that to hold you back and you're decreeing today, but I'm going higher, I'm refusing to let yesterday's toils, trials, anything push me back. I'm breaking through. I'm breaking through the ceiling. I keep getting to the same place and bumping my head. It seems like I make uh, two steps forward and then ten back, but the devil is a liar. I want everything God has for me. I shall get there. I shall walk in the victory. I shall walk in the anointing come on come on I want you to know that the enemy does not want you to get to that place the enemy wants you to be goose fat lose your vision for soaring lose your vision you had a business plan you had an idea you had a book in you and you he let you get goose fat. You did a few good things and, and then you forgot that I got to keep pressing. You still talking about what you did three years ago. Yeah, when God blessed me three years ago, I used to do this. I used to have this. I used to do this. I used to speak like, yeah, that's yesterday. What you doing today? What you doing now? Huh? God, you were running well. Who bewitched you? That's what Paul asked the Galatians. He said, you were running well. Who tricked you? Who deceived you? Who caused you to get off course? What's going on? I put greatness inside of you. You are my people. You're called by my name. I'm not going to let anything. Paul said, I ain't perfect now. I love God with all my heart, mind, and soul. I'm not perfect, but I know one thing. The junk I did yesterday, I got to forget that. 
Because see, you will be still somewhere nursing wounds of yesterday. And God is saying, today I'm trying to show you. I opened a door for you. I made a way for you. And can I tell you, thank God anyway that he didn't give us what we deserve in our yesterday. That's enough right there. Because let me tell you something. We've done enough stuff. We are guilty of enough stuff that God could have wiped us away and blown us off the map anyway. And so his grace gave you today. So that must tell you that God wants you to succeed. He wants you to excel. He wants you to accelerate because he brought you into the day. He knows the thoughts he thinks towards you. The thoughts of peace and not of evil and to give you an expected end. He knows that about, and listen, God knows all about you and he still wants to bless you. Now, you ought, you ought to thank God, huh? See, see, because there, there's some of y'all, y'all would hate on me if you knew everything about me. You would, you, you, you would critique me and put me down if you knew everything about me. But God knows everything about me and still wants to bless me. Because he's God, he's gracious, he's merciful, and he created you for it. And so you got to walk in what he created you for. Stop denying it. Stop, stop getting around goose fat people who don't want to go anywhere and go higher and letting them talk you out of what God said about you. Stop. And say, no, God, I'm going to keep pressing. I got to keep pursuing who you called me to be. I, I, I can't leave anything out there. When I finish this life, when I leave this side, I want to accomplish everything that's been in front of me. I want to achieve what God said. And I don't have time to be goose fat, eating the corn on the ground while the other geese are flying, honking their horns saying, come on up. But I've gotten so heavy now and complete.